Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about linear equations and graphing linear equations using their intercepts. So first let's make sure that we all understand that when we talk about linear equations, um, we are talking about something that might look like this. Now what makes this a linear equation are a couple things. One, we have both an x and y. And just like when we talked about linear functions, x could be considered input, this can be considered output. Um, right now it's in standard form, which means both the variables are on the left side, right here. And there's going to be some other rules that we'll talk about later. Um, but right now we're going to talk about when both of the variable terms are on one side and we have a constant on the other. And what really makes this a linear equation, and notice the root word line, um, is the fact that in all the variables they have exponent of 1. If the exponent is not 1, it's not linear. If uh, it's not a line, that we don't graph a line, it, the exponents aren't 1. Because when we have an exponent of 1 on the variables, the graph will always, without exception, be a straight line. It won't be any sort of curve. So on something like uh, uh, this, we basically say for any two points, any two points in the plane actually will define the line. For any two points, there is exactly one line that contains them both. And these two points happen to work at, for this equation. In other words, the input-output would give me um, an equation or a function that looks like this. Now, when we talk about linear equations, we're going to talk about functions or equations that are continuous. So in other words, this line is continuous. There are an infinite amount of points on this line. That means I can put in any x, get out any y, that is a point that I can graph, and it'll be on this line. So as a function, we would say that the domain and range are all real numbers. That means there's nothing prohibited. I can put any x in here. I can get any y out of here. So it is a continuous graph. Because it is continuous and it goes on forever, every single linear equation must, must cross the x-axis. Every single one except one exception we will get to uh, later. Every single linear equation must cross the x-axis and therefore it must have an x-intercept. There's one thing about the x-intercept, it'll be where the line crosses the x-axis and notice that it crosses right here. But any single point that's on the x-axis, there's something they all have in common, and what that is is they all have a value of zero for y. Every single point on the x-axis must have a y of zero. And this particular one right here, when we talk about x-intercepts, it's understood that it's that value on the x-axis and usually if someone asks you what the x-intercept is, you would look at this and probably say 2. But understand, it is a point that's on the line. Okay. Y-intercept. That's um, where the line crosses the y-axis. And one thing that every single point on the y-axis has is they all have in common that they all have an x of 0. Notice that x of 0. And so when we talk about the y-intercept of a line, we're usually referring to this number right here, that y-coordinate. So it would be this uh, number right here, which is, of course, 4 on the y-axis. But remember, this is a point that is on the line and that this x and y satisfies this linear equation. So if we do have... Uh, two points that we know are on the line and that we know that two points define the line it makes it a very easy uh, way to graph and we set up a very simple t-table and that will give us two important points the x-intercept and the y-intercept and it's very simple uh, to find those particular points because all we have to do is substitute the y equals 0 and the x equals 0 and solve so if I say y equals 0 in this Okay, if this is 0 here, it's just 2x plus 0 equals 4. Obviously, 2 times something equals 4, and that's what gives us our 2 right here. Same with the y-intercept. If x is 0, remember, this is just a 0, so what's y going to be? 4. 
It's really simple. We'll even use a method called the cover-up method in our uh, next examples. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and graph this equation by using the intercept method. I'm going to have my little intercept table, or it's just like a mini T table, but I'm only going to have two points. And the first point I'm going to look for is my X intercept. That's where on the X axis that this line crosses. So I have Y equals zero, because I know that every single point on the X axis must have a Y of zero. Now I mentioned the cover up method. If y is zero, if this y is zero right here, I always think of it this way, and I, if I have it on paper, I usually use my thumb, but I just cover it, this term up, because it's basically going away. And I want to know where on the x-axis it crosses, well, this will give that to me. You probably do it in your head. Four times something equals 12. Well, that something obviously is three. And when I plot that point right here and label it, this represents my x-intercept. For my y-intercept, I know that all the points on the y-axis are zero. So I can take the x term and just cover it up. And again, probably do this in your head. Negative 2 times something is 12. That would be negative 6. This represents my y-intercept. Label it. And now it's just a matter of connecting the dots and extending. And then you would use a nice straight edge and knowing to extend um, all the way to the boundary of our coordinate plane. So with two very simple points, we have graphed that line. Okay, let's try another one. Now this one, um, uh, we talked about something being in standard form, having both the X and the Y on the same side over here. Well, I can totally do uh, do the same thing as I did before, use the cover-up method. But you know, I know you guys are really good at clearing the fraction by now, and some of you may even do it in your head. So I'm going to just clean this equation up, just make it nicer, get rid of my denominators by clearing the fraction. When I do, I get uh, really quite a simple equation, 3x plus 4y equals 24. Again, it's a linear equation because of the, uh, uh, the exponents are 1. Uh, and now, if I want to find my x-intercept, I make y equal 0. And again, just like we said before, think of that as just being covered up. 3 times x equals 24. 3 times something, well, that something is 8. I'm going to come and plot that up here. Oh, I'm sorry, over here. And label it. Next, I'm going to get my y-intercept. My y-intercept, that's where x is 0. I want to know what the y is where x is 0, so I'm going to cover this up. 4 times something is 24. That something is, of course, 6. Take this 0, 6 and know how to plot that on the y-axis and label it. And just connect the dots. So as simple as can be, we've plotted uh, two uh, linear equations very accurately with the um, x-intercepts. In your homework, I asked you to do um, plot the first two on the same graph. If you did it correctly, it should look like this. And if you want to check how good you are at graphing, know that your, uh, uh, your intersection of those two lines will go in here someplace. Now, later in later chapters, we'll learn exactly what that point is. But for now, just check. If you check that your, uh, that your intersection is right here, basically that one, two, three, four, fifth box over and third box up, then you probably did a pretty good job of graphing. Okay? Um, your homework is there. Uh, uh, notice that this is in, uh, we call these systems of equations, but for us at this point, we just want to uh, graph those two equations, or the two equations you see in each um, of your coordinate planes. Okay, see you tomorrow.